hands are on their feet. We're ready to go racing in New England. My name's Amy Long. And I'm Jose Castillo. And are you ready to have fun, New Hampshire Motor Speedway? Let me hear you make yeah, some noise. Woo! I think they're ready to have some fun, Jose. Hey, everyone. Hey, that's a great oh, sign over there. I love it, man. It's so good to see you guys here. So this is a beautiful night. Are you guys having fun yet? Oh, man. And we're here at a prime time hour too, so this is a really special show for us as well. So we have a special guest too. That's right. We have a great lineup for you tonight on this stage. First of all, special guest Marcus Smith is going to be joining us here. Get up. And awesome. How about that number 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr.? What was his name again? That's right. And Clint <laughs> Boyer is going to be on this yeah, stage. Yeah. And Ryan Blaney. Give it up. We also have Austin Dillon coming up as well. That's right. It's going to be an amazing show. It Lots will. of fun stuff with you guys, the fans, getting to interact. So, so if we're you guys so have stoked. any questions for any of these drivers, be sure to hashtag them to NASCAR Trackside. Also wanted to say hello to everyone on NASCAR.com tuning in. Hello, everyone on NASCAR.com. That's awesome. Well, let's give our first guest a welcome. Who do we Absolutely. have up first? Absolutely. We have SMI CEO and the one and only Marcus Smith. Come on out, Marcus. Hey. Hey. Hey, y'all. What's up? Check out this crowd, Marcus. <laughs> Look at these what's guys up? out hey, here, man. What's up? Fun? How y'all doing? Wow. All right. Cool. I think they're ready for a good show tonight. What do you think? I think so. You guys look like you're ready cool. to have some fun. That's right. They're yeah, already having right. fun. I, I, look at this guy. I know, yeah. I know. He's also front row right there. Yes. Now, I got to start out by asking, what was the thought process about bringing NASCAR trackside back for the fans? Bringing it for the fans. That's what we wanted to do. That's you. Um, absolutely. You know, I'm a huge NASCAR fan, and I love watching uh, the speed stage. You guys uh, all saw that. I'm sure a bunch of you did. And uh, we want to bring it back. So um, in talking with teams and NASCAR and our crew here, um, we're bringing it back for you guys. And uh, Jose and Amy have been bringing it every uh, every event for us. It's really great. And uh, this is a big night for us. It's our first night back, uh, which is a lot of fun. So um, I think you guys are going to have a great time. It's, uh, it's a good time. Beautiful weather here in New Hampshire. And uh, we've got a lot of fun guests to bring out. And uh, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and speaking of which, I, I think we should go out and I bring our first so guests good. out. So Great please, welcome to the stage, the number 88, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. Come on out here, Dale. Woo. Woo. Oh, he brought some goodies with him, too. How about that? Oh, yeah. And while he's tossing out some more swag, a good arm. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Join us right over here. And also bring to the stage, please, if you would, the number four to Mr. Clint Boyer. All right, buddy. <laughs> you got you got a good arm there, man. That's pretty good. All right. That was nice. Join us here. <laughs> You know, I knew this was going to happen. I, I knew there was going to be an empty spot right there. I don't know. That's kind of I, etiquette for guys. You don't want to get too close to each other. Well, there's a, there, I let one go on the back, backstage. So I don't think, I think he still thinks it's kind of fermenting around here. But oh, yeah. How's everyone? This is awesome. All right. Yeah. That's a great idea. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, man. This is great to have you guys out here. It's great to have all the fans out here. Um, 
you know, I think New Hampshire Motor Speedway, because the, the races are in the daytime, people come out, they uh, like to tailgate and camp and then hang out out in, in the evening and just walk around and have a good time. This gives you a place, you guys a place to go, right? All right. It's a good night. Hanging out with, with Clint and Dale, and uh, I'm just here for, uh, for fun. I'm going to have fun with you guys. All right. All right. But talk a little bit about the prime time, because this was like an idea of Marcus was like, hey, we want to get some couches. We want to hang out with the drivers, hang out with the fans, and just tell some stories and share some. So what was the thought process behind this and just kind of hanging out here with the fans? That's it, man. I just wanted to have some fun. And um, we uh, otherwise would be maybe coming back from dinner right now in the, in the motor coach, just sitting around. So may as well sit around and talk to each other. And uh, that, that makes it fun. So, um, you know, these guys... Um, these guys are a lot of fun. You guys know that. Um, so Dale asked me earlier, what are we going to talk about, man? I said, let's just shoot the bull. You guys good with that? Okay. That sounds good. I came to party. Wait, is your, your mic working? Here, I gotta make sure. We got to make sure Clint's mic works. Does this work? I came to party. I don't know what. I thought this party. was a party. We got some beer if you need. Uh, we got Coors. <laughs> here you go, right here. There we go. We got Miller. Can't we got... drink anymore. We got to ride bikes. Yeah, there you go. All the healthy things. <laughs> I'd say we make a pact with one another. No more bike riding. Let's just drink beer. Let's be fat. <laughs> and still go out and put on a hell of a show on Sunday. You need one of these? <laughs> I'll <drink> catch it. <laughs> there you go. Just, just start a party. Um, so you guys tell me, um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about on the track. I want to go on track, and then I want to go off track. So start with the track today. Tell me about what you thought about the track. Um, of course, we, we put some of the PJ1, the sticky stuff down. would love to know what you guys thought about that. Uh, yeah, you know, I kind of thought it was fun because uh, it had everybody guessing, you know, had, every, had everybody kind of moving around and searching uh, a lot more than we typically do here. And the track, that stuff sort of wears away and comes and goes. And uh, so that was, you know, that was a lot of fun. I know you guys are talking about putting some more down. Uh, I think that we have used up pretty much everything that we had down on the top. The Modifieds took a bunch of that up as well. We had a lot of racing today, so... I'd definitely like to see some more added to the top and uh, the bottom. What y'all added last night to the bottom, I think, changed the track even more. So, yeah, I, I think it's great. I think it's it's awesome if you want to put if you want to create another groove that we don't typically run. Um, the one we're gonna, you know, the one we're always running is is good the way it is, and so that that gives guys an opportunity. I think it'll be good on restarts, a little more side by side action. What do you think? I think the coolest thing was, just like you said, it had everybody guess, and the conversation on the radio all day long was, all right, where are they running? Where do I need to be? You know, where's the groove moving? It reminded me of a dirt track like I grew up racing. It was ever-changing. Uh, right. It seemed like it kept pushing up higher and higher and higher, and then all of a sudden it was gone, blew the cushion over, and then you're running on the bottom by the end of happy hour when the sun broke through the clouds and the, the thing got slick. And then I went up and watched uh, the Xfinity race. It was part of the PRM broadcast, and you watched those guys maneuver through traffic and been able to, to use that. Uh, is it PJ1 VHT? Which which yeah, one? Yeah, is well, both? Can we Has anybody bought into this? It's, both. Like it's, well Z-Max. Yet? it's actually Z-Max. It's Z-Max. <laughs> that's, <laughs> put down. Hey, that's what I was going to yeah. say. If they're not going to contribute, yeah. why should we call it what it is? Yeah, there you go. It's sticky stuff. But you did a great job on the PRN broadcast. Thank you, man, for yeah, joining really. us on the radio. It's um, always fun to do that. Yeah. Uh, those guys do such a great job. I uh, love watching these races on TV, but it's so much fun. The energy, uh, the excitement that they deliver to the racing and, and the racing fans is uh, second to none. It's always fun to be a part of that. It's uh, I, I love listening to the radio. The guys do a great job. When I'm in the car, if there's a race on, I'm listening to it. Or the talk shows. Yeah, because you don't know if the guy is nine seconds ahead like he is or not because they're screaming and hollering. You think, oh, he's going to get him. Yeah. Then they say at the end, I won by 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Theater well, of mind. Yes. I thought yes. he was door to door. Yeah, you got it. Well, um, yeah, I saw the the line change, like you guys were saying, during the, the Xfinity race. You could see guys testing the low line, the middle, and the high. And uh, it looked to me like it was pretty even for the, at least the first half of that race. Do you, you see the same thing? Yeah, I mean, that top was kind of wearing away, and what you added last night to the bottom made the bottom pretty strong this morning. And uh, so I felt like that the bottom was probably going to be there uh, a little bit longer in that Xfinity race, and it looked like I was watching the, you know, the fast guys in the cup practice. <laughs> We're not one of them. 
I was watching the fast guys in the cup practice and uh, like Truex and, and 18, the 11, all those guys were already in the bottom groove in that second practice and all were really working and focusing uh, on how their cars drive down there because I think that we all feel like that that's probably where we're going to end up. We might not race there at the start of the race, uh, especially with an ad additional stuff put down tonight, but by the end of the race, we'll have it all wore out and uh, back down to the bottom. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, I'm glad to hear that from you guys. Yeah, let's hear it. Um, <laughs> so um, when so that's that's on track and uh, looking forward to seeing the race tomorrow. It was um, man, it was a long, a lot of race in the day. If you're a race fan, you got this is the place to be. You if got you're a, a race lot of fan, stuff to see today. Definitely the place to be. We can't do night racing here, but we almost do night racing. It's pretty wild. <laughs> that, uh, really last close race. Today. Yeah. So um, so let's talk about uh, something else you do on on wheels. You guys are, are both in a cycling, right? He's not. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Well, no. He don't. I mean, I can ride a bike, but Have I'm not. You seen these guys in spandex? <laughs> it's it's. I mean, else. these are. This dude was in this sport when I got in. I'm like, that's a hero right there. <laughs> You haven't lived till you've seen your hero in fluorescent <laughs> spandex. <laughs> it's the most embarrassing thing ever. Yeah. It definitely takes a little uh, getting used to. But uh, I can drink a lot more beer, and uh, and I get to eat pizza and cheeseburgers and all kinds of stuff. So I actually have on my Garmin while we're riding, it tells me how many beers I've earned instead of how many calories I've, I've burned. Oh, that's I'm perfect. serious as a heart attack. That's motivation right there. It says you've earned three beers. Wow. How so many did you earn today? Those are additional beers to what I'd already planned to drink. I was going to say, <laughs> three beers isn't going to prime the yeah. pump for These your category. These are just bonus beers. Yeah. Bonus beers. Yeah. That's so, fantastic. What motivation? I know. It's, uh, it's, you know, you take what you can get. We were, um, we hey, were in the... When the screen starts flashing red after <laughs> right, three right. exclamation points passed at Amy. You, Who's Clint. Amy? Where's Amy? Amy? Amy's out in the crowd. She's there actually she got is. some fans. That's questions. Amy? Yes, that's Amy. How the hell we get stuck with you two and that's Amy? <laughs> I, I know. I know. Hello, Trust everybody. me. Oh, my God. Toss it to Amy. <laughs> I'm actually Amy, out what's here hanging with all these awesome fans out here. Hey, guys. We have a fan question from the stage from Landon. Dale, what are you going to be doing after retirement? Oh, man. <laughs> Earning them beers. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I hope I might, uh, you know, I might get into the broadcast and stuff. We've been talking a little bit about that. I definitely want to be around the sport, and that's one thing that would keep me involved. And uh, so I would have a lot of time to drink beer at least half of the season. I thought you were going to come help me run speedways. I will come. I'll come help you if you can afford me. <laughs> um, yeah. I free mean, beer. How about yeah, that? <laughs> free beer. I don't know if that's going to. I got to have money to buy this beer I'm drinking. Uh, we got the, you know, we got the Xfinity teams. We're still going to have, uh, you know, the four teams racing next year. And I'm going to run about six races each year for as long as I want. So, um, yeah. Awesome. We're going to keep on we're going to keep on digging with that and we might jump in a late model and slide into Hickory Motor Speedway one night without telling anybody and uh, without even telling Amy. So uh, probably the only way we'll be able to get away with it. Literally anybody. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Awesome well, question, um, but so uh, on the bike, you guys, how many miles are you, are you riding like every day? You ride a, a few day a few days a week? Most of the time I'm only riding on the weekends. We get in here in the bus lot and uh, there's a lot of drivers that ride. So today I rode with Jamie and Trevor Bain and, and Casey. Yesterday I rode with Jimmy and that whole group and uh, Matt Kenseth. Uh, I was standing in the uh, in the garage area during practice and this guy walked up and said uh he asked me to do an interview for his podcast and he said i'm gonna ride with you guys today when you riding i said i don't know probably around 3 45 i'm gonna ride i said all right i, I thought he's being a smart ass so I, I didn't think nothing of it we got our stuff ready and me and the, the other guys are riding out of here and we got about a mile from the track and this guy comes pedaling up ready in his gear on his bike and he's like remember me i was in the i was in the garage i said i was gonna ride let's go and so we left him on the first hill, never saw him again. That <laughs> and, gives uh, some of these guys some ideas, though. Yeah he, yeah, he didn't last very long. I looked back, and he was huffing and puffing and leaned over the handlebars. 
But um, that's a lot of fun. It's a very social activity, but it doesn't last long uh, for some of those guys. But we had a lot of fun. We ride about 25 miles today, 22 miles yesterday, ride about 70 miles a week. And uh, I, you'll, let's, you'll see. Once you turn 40, boy, you've got to pick something up. That's, uh, there you go. You've got to pick something up, something up besides down. them 12 ounces. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Clint, how what are God you doing? invented a Harley Davidson right there. Oh, there we yeah. We, we've actually got two more guests that have just joined us backstage, and I think they want to come out here and maybe throw some questions around, too. Okay. So what do you guys think? You want to add a couple more to the mix? Y'all want to add some yeah. more? So right now, backstage, if you would, please welcome the number 21, Ryan Blaney. Come on out here, right. Ryan. And then also joining him, Austin Dillon. Come on out, Austin. All right. You guys all can sit oh, down. And grab a seat. right. You get to sit in between. What's up, bud? Good to see you, man. All right. By the way, what's up, guys? How's Ryan, it going? Good. You How better you tell guys? Ryan why he has that seat right there in between you guys. That's that the love was the empty seat one. Now. I know. I know. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> We're just neighbors. talking about spandex, guys. I don't know how you feel about uh, bright color spandex, but Clint is opposed to it. They're 20 years old. They've got 20 years before they have to wear spandex, according to <laughs> the plus 40 <laughs> class over here. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. Uh, Austin, you're, you're working on getting married pretty soon, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah. Here All right, soon, December, December 9th. So. All right. Went cake testing this week. All right. Cake yeah. testing. Cake testing. And, nice. Um, I cake screwed up. I cake screwed, testing? Yeah, I screwed up cake testing. Good job, man. Yeah. I talked too much and said I like pink lemonade cake, and it didn't work out. Shoot. You're, you, That's kind of like you doing laundry. Learn, if you screw it up the first time, <laughs> they never ask you to do it again. Yeah. I you got to start soon, buddy. You got to get started testing. soon. All right, Clint, you, you and I are the only dads up here right so um, why don't you tell tell us give a little picture of, of what of what it's like with little babies yeah it's uh pretty much no sleep fellas absolutely uh. <laughs> no sleep at all i have a two and a half year old somehow he, he didn't has, sleep before oh it's terrible he does do <laughs> yeah he does donuts in the bed like he'll kick you about every 20 minutes right upside the head it's yep. the damnedest thing i've ever seen yeah he just does like donuts in the bed do you put them in the bed? You let them sleep in the bed? Tried. You, you I was dead set against it. Yeah. Straight to the crib. Then you get to the bus, and, and it's terrible. 40 feet is not enough, by yeah, the way. Yeah, not enough. For a two-and-a-half-year-old and a, a seven-month-old. Take note, fellas. I think we ought to be able to work a deal. Uh, <laughs> so we should have our own motorhome. You ought to do a... I'll take a mini winnie. The small... Smallest one they make, 20 you, foot. You should go in with the other dads door. and get a baby bus. Y'all could split it like 10 ways and put all the babies in the bus. 40 and be feet's able to sleep. not enough. You trip yeah. over toys. Now that you're getting approaching 40, you get up at night, if you know what I mean. <laughs> About busting my ass on a John Deere tractor the other week. That was bad. Oh, man. That's crazy. Now, Ryan, you, um, you live next door to Dale? Kind of. Somewhat, yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. Um, he actually uh, lives next door to my mom. Okay. So she's, she's sort of in between yeah, she's me and Ryan, yeah. Yeah, she's gotten mad at me a couple times. She, she has. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. first. Have you learned anything yet being over there? No, she threatened to call the cops, but I, I stopped. <laughs> uh, I shot off a bunch of fireworks one night, and that, that didn't go over too well. With, but, um, was this 4th of July or just any old night? Just any Tuesday night. Oh, wow. It was like the first month I moved in, too, so that wasn't probably the best impression yet. But uh, we're good now. We had, uh, had some drinks over it, and we're, we're good. Is I haven't there shot anything, up any, though, since then. So Being a, being a neighbor of Dale Jr., is there anything in particular you've learned that you want to share with the group? <laughs> <laughs> He's shaking his head. Don't want me to tell stories up here. But uh, No, I, um, I think one of the biggest things I learned is uh, – I think Daryl can drink more than anybody up here, even in the crowd, to be honest with you. Yes. Uh, I, think you won that title. I knew it! I'm not going to lie. I'm 23 years old and I can't even hang. Everybody, everybody when, they're, when the conversation of drinking comes up, Clint's name always goes to the top of the list. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Finally! Yeah. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> you are an animal. So. I'll give you that. <laughs> Speaking of animals, you guys have, uh, Clint, you've got a, a farm. A ranch? Yeah, what? What is it? Farm. We all have it. You have a bunch of animals too. You have buffalo. Yeah. I don't have any buffalo. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty what, badass. What do you have? I didn't ask for these buffalo. They just showed up. <laughs> That's what happens when you're Dale Jr. You just get who gives a buffalo for a present? Seriously, somebody gave you. Happy a buffalo? birthday! Here's a herd of buffalo. Yeah. Fantastic. 
I got four buffalo and two from two different fans of ours that have buffalo farms. Wow. They said, you, you know, we fence this area in right here. These 12 acres will bring some of them up there. And I said, you know, is it expensive or what do, you know, what do they do? They don't do anything. <laughs> so we, uh, they're just, they're four girls. So there's no, you know, no funny business going on. And they got to fight like crazy, don't they? Well, no, not really. The, the, if, I had a, if, I had, if you have a male, so like Newman, he has his own buffalo farm. He has, he breeds them and all that stuff. You got to have a way big, taller fence and. I ain't trying to spend so no money Here's on my fence. Buffalo story with Newman. I go up there to, what's his deal? The uh, rescue animal ranch. Rescue, 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 rescue ranch. Up there and he shows me them buffalo, and I was thinking, all right, man, this will be cool. Let's go out and feed the buffalo. We stand about 30 feet from the fence and throws, hurls as far as he can, a bucket of apples at him. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's as close as we get. That, that's what well, he I ain't does. getting in there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. I can't wait to get a buffalo. Lou was about as big as a buffalo. He could get in there with them. Yeah, that's why he's <laughs> able to feed them. That's terrible. What? Well, when you race against horse jockeys like these little midgets. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> he Austin, looks, you guys have it? It's pretty big. Austin, you guys have any animals? I have a dog. All right. Chesapeake Bay Retriever. He's lucky if he comes in the house, but that's about it. You own any buffalo? No buffalo. You I, do I want a buffalo? Yeah, you want any? I got two. Uh, See, I'm getting ready I got to get two that I, I need to give ask. away. I got the first two I like. The other two, are, they're, they're busting through the fence, and then the, you know, they all four kind of walk off. And then the cops oh, wow. call you at the middle of the night. Sounds like fun, don't it? Yeah. Think I could get a dollar for visitation on uh, Dale Jr.'s buffalo at the house? Let me ask you guys something. When, when you're around town, I mean, you're in Mooresville, all you guys in, around Mooresville, Austin, you're, you're up I'm in, in Lexington. Clint lives, Lexington. Clint lives like five miles from me and won't, okay. come, won't come over and drink a beer. So do you all go to the drive through That is the, the truth. Last time you won't come over I and went drink over a beer? there and drank a beer. This is my Dale Jr. story drinking with him. I, was lo I woke up in his basement, and I was locked in. I couldn't get out of the house. <laughs> I thought I was like, in a nightclub. Like, I like got a dungeon? Up. It was, I was locked in. In the dungeon. Not locked out. I was locked <laughs> in the house. The landscapers out there working. <laughs> it was daylight. And uh, I'm beating on the window. He comes up and opens the door from the outside. He's like, can I help you? I'm like, how the hell do you get out of this place? <laughs> he escaped to the bedroom via the, uh, where, you went to the closet or something, disappeared. <laughs> <It's> secret, <laughs> secret elevator. See, <laughs> I don't have an elevator in my closet, this, ladies this and happened, gentlemen. He, when this happened, he was still living in Missouri, and then he moved five miles away, and he, uh, he won't even come over. It's dangerous. What's the deal? It's a dangerous, dangerous place to be. Will Laura let you go over? Laura, now actually she was about to divorce me after that trip uh. to Dale Jr., so... <laughs> There you go. It's a big contributing factor, as a matter of fact. Ah, there you go. That's the deal. That's the deal. So, you guys, when y'all y'all go out to restaurants ar around town and uh, and just hang out, do you go to the uh, to the drive through and say, "Hey, I'm I'm Clint Boyer, and I want buffalo, you know, like, but some a bu some buffalo wings, like a buffalo burger." Yeah, well, we just eat them. At, at Are people used to seeing you guys around town? We no. have two restaurants in Lexington, North Carolina. <laughs> two, two. Do they, Are they buffets? And they burn down. And we got Bojangles. And that's about it. That's all you need right there, buddy. That's all we Bojangles got. Y'all know Bojangles? It's a southern delicacy. It's uh, real good butter Spice. biscuits and chicken. Ben yeah. gravy. Dirty rice. Gravy. Anybody? Chicken man, I love dirty rice. Morning. That's good stuff. You uh, go out and eat quite a bit. Yeah, I go, uh, I go into town. Yeah. Yeah. It's about... <laughs> I get, old, get on the wagon and go into town. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we got Amy likes. I never ate sushi before until I met Amy, so we, we go to sushi joints. Um, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> we got a couple. Uh, we, Pie in the Sky, that's probably my, probably my favorite place. It's in the back of a building on Main Street. Uh, yeah, pizza joint. Pie in the sky. Pie in the sky. So good. I was going there when I was in high school, and uh, it's still open today. Ran by the same guy. Uh, really good pizza. But yeah. my favorite. We, I used to live in Mooresville, and there's a place called Johnette's Catering on on Main Street. Mm -hmm. It was always really good. Had the smoking yeah. turkey sandwich, and uh, Swerving Irvin would come in there every every. Uh, it was usually on a Tuesday that I'd go in there. Tuesday turkey. 
and that was uh, that was a good spot in Main Street, Mooresville. That's the problem with us going out Tuesday. You heard him say Tuesday a lot. Tuesday's our Saturday, and it has been that way. <laughs> it's, it's flashing again to toss it to Amy, by the way. <laughs> Amy, there's Amy. only one exclamation point this time, so we'll hold uh, off what just oh, oh, ten oh. seconds. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> Tuesday's <laughs> our Saturday. And uh, a lot happens on Tuesdays in Racers Life, I think, right? Uh, yeah, I just kind of hang out at home and drink beer. That's what I do on Tuesdays, I guess. But um, I don't think a lot happens, really. I don't know. You're, you're a family man. I don't. You got to chill out sometime, so. right? <laughs> We're, we'll ask Ryan about being single uh, when we come back. But right now, she let's uh, check in with Amy, see what's up over there. Hey, everyone, I'm over here on this side stage, over here with Alan, who has a question right for the stage right there. Alan, what's your question? Hey, Ryan Bellini, how was it winning a race at Pocono with no radio? How was it winning the race at Pocono with no radio? Um, it was different. I've never had that happen before. Uh, so the team, I could hear the team, but they couldn't hear me. So that was a little bit different. Uh, it was pretty quiet. Um, they, it was probably a good thing because they couldn't hear me the whole time uh, throughout the race. So that was probably good. But um, I think the, most, the thing that kind of stunk the most is I couldn't talk to them after the race until I got to victory lane. Uh, that was pretty much the, you know, I wanted to talk to Eddie and Lynn, the Wood Brothers, and uh, I couldn't do that until I, I finally saw them in Victory Lane. So it was like I haven't seen them or talked to them in a long time. Uh, so that actually made it a little bit more special when we got to Victory Lane. But uh, that was something different and just kind of happenstance that something that rarely happens went wrong and we end up winning the race, which is uh, which pretty neat. That's a very thoughtful answer, Ryan. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much for your question, Alan. All right. Do you think... Uh, do you think, since you did so well, maybe the guys just turn your radio off next time? Try That's to get what you to I, do I, a little I better. legitimately thought they were just <laughs> pretending like they couldn't hear me. Yeah. Uh, so I would, they would, I would stop talking to them, but um, they might do that again, actually. They yeah. might just cut the cord next time. That's a, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Not a bad idea. So we'll see. So do all, all four of you guys like to hunt? So, yes. Yeah? I don't, uh, Ryan Blaney, been here? you like to hunt? I've been hunting one time. You, do you like hunt it? every night. Did you like it? I, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Chases him two legged doe. I'm not fact, saying I you. saw you in a dairy stand last night. <laughs> Easy. Anyway, Easy. so have you been been on any good hunting trips lately? Easy. Any, anything new hunting? Are you guys deer hunting? Are you? Oh man, every hunting trip is fun. That's like our getaway. It's so much. We all have massive amounts of ADD. We're pulled a, a hundred different directions, maybe some more than, than others. But uh, um, it's just to get out with your friends and hang out, drink a couple beers or, or more, and uh, have fun around the campfire. And just get out in the outdoors and have fun, make fun of each other, and enjoy that hunt. Uh, whether you get anything or not, it's so much fun. and something I always enjoy and look forward to. Yeah. I know... Um, <clears throat> Uh, we, me and Truex hunt all all the time together. We bow hunt in Ohio, and I was I've been messing with my cameras all weekend, getting all that stuff going again. And uh, he brought some new cameras in, and we uh, LW, my brother-in-law, has been up there this week putting all that stuff out and uh, filling up the feeders and all that good stuff. So uh, we go uh, we go a couple weeks at the start of the season, and uh, we turkey hunt once or twice a year up there as well. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Like, uh, we get to spend time with our family. My uncle Robert on my grandfather G's side is, uh, is a big-time hunter. So it's really the only time I ever get to spend time with guys like him. And uh, it's a blast, especially uh, in, in Mitch and Truex. Uh, me and him have been friends a really long time. And to be able to be around your friends away from the racetrack is a real treat for me. So uh, we always have a lot of fun when we go up there together. Cool. Cool. Gee, yeah, Austin. I, go to, I go to Texas every year. And uh, we go to Texas, and I take a couple of my guys from the race team out there, and we'll fly down there. And we hunt in these um, jacked-up trucks with hydraulic lifts on them. So you get to chasing a deer, you just raise the truck up a little bit with the lift like the a top. pontoon boat on wheels no, I mean, kind of thing? A, it's like having a box stand on top of a truck yeah. with a hydraulic lift. It goes That's about awesome. 20 feet in the air. So you See, get above the, the, the ski between, flats. This is the difference between growing up Richard Childress's grandson and me in Kansas. We didn't have no. <laughs> I didn't I know, have a lift in the back let, of my truck. Hold on, yeah. hold on, yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. My hunting buddy here, yeah. his first hunt was with Richard Childress. There you go. It first was. hunt. 
I mean, I figure it went like this. Supposedly, he shoots the deer. He goes up to it and goes, oh. Super sorry about that. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> but now he's a big, great white hunter. Oh, he loves it go. all. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. You got to uh, dodge tornadoes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, crazy uh, weather actually, out there. Actually, that was a funny story because that is true. One of the first hunts I ever went on, Richard, we had just did good. Our first year racing cup and and had a good year and i was all pumped up he's like all right boy i'm gonna take you hunting after the banquet in new york and boy i'm i'm all the way through the bass pro catalog i've got camo head uh, to toe i mean i'm loaded for bear i'm thinking i'm going to shoot a grizzly bear or a tiger we're going to africa because richard hunts all over we land in kansas i'm like ah! <laughs> i probably know that deer that's funny that's oh, good yeah. Huge letdown, but we had a budget. We had a big time. That's awesome. Well, you guys, uh, you guys like music. I know you go to a lot of a lot of big shows. When you go, you you know a lot of the artists that you go and see. Um, who are the, some of the big shows you've been to lately? That uh, kind of music you like? I went and seen Tyler Farr and Brantley Gilbert the other night right up the road. That was pretty cool. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, at the amphitheater. That amphitheater is really sweet, man. Yeah. I'm gone. I saw Earth, Wind, and Fire there, and Reba. Yeah. And Tyler Farr and Brantley Gilbert. It's really uh, a lot of Very different cool. artists play over there. All kinds <laughs> of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Um, Dale, I know you, uh, you, you've you been a fan of 21 Pilots for uh, for a while, and yeah. they've done it really well. Yeah, I I, uh, I knew those guys before they hit it big, so we um, I had my 40th birthday party, and Amy talked them into flying in for that and playing down at Whiskey River in Charlotte. Um, right yeah, right before they took off, man, it was pretty cool. And everybody there was like, hey, who in the hell is this band? And now they're all over the radio now. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I kind of listen to, I don't know if anybody's going to recognize any of the names, but we we definitely like going to, you know, shows when we can. And uh, so we have a lot of fun doing that. Last one I went to was in Milwaukee. Uh, Lord Huron is a band I went to see. And I think I'm going to Pittsburgh sometime in September to see another band that I'm, I got a buddy that plays in called The Dangerous Summer. So looking forward to that. Cool. Very cool. Somebody was yelling Tim Duggar's name out there. I heard, I heard a Duggar. Uh, yeah, old Duggar. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Duggar's best concerts are in Junior's basement, though. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's or some over of his at, best over work. Over at right Dylan's there. house. Yeah. He's been over there a time or two. Oh, fun. That's really cool. Um, so, uh, Clint, how about you, man? I know you uh, you got uh, your pretty good buddies with Blake Shelton. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did come across the tabloids this week, though. I had to text him. I said, man, I'm, everything all right? <laughs> those are so bad. It's so embarrassing that they can do that and, and, you know, totally scrutinize those people's lives. It's actually really sad. Knowing the people and knowing who they are, it's like, what in the hell? How do you even get by with that? I wish they could all uh, go away. But anyway... Um, yeah, a ton of fun with Blake. He's a hunter. Uh, he's got an awesome place in Oklahoma, speaking of hunting, that we go down to and have a lot of fun when we're at the Texas race. But uh, Blake, uh, come, Blake comes over to the house, right? Yeah, Great he's spirit. been over there. That um, sounds cool. It's, it's actually a lot of work when he comes yeah. around. <laughs> Media shows up. and, and uh, That sounds awesome. It's actually a pain in the ass. Yeah. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you my go. Phone, my phone must have been dead that day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, that would have been nice. A real friend that lives five miles away yeah, would have called hey, you up. Blake you Shelton. actually would have been yeah. really good Blake at that Shelton's day. over drinking beer. <laughs> I got some beer. Come drink it. Nice. There you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. We'll, we'll uh, work on that. We'll work on that. But, yeah, that's, that's what's cool about music and, and racing and everything. It all goes hand in hand. And you know why? It's because of fans. You guys make it all work. And uh, it's so much fun to come to these racetracks all across the country and meet the fans, interact with the fans. Marcus is a... Uh, Hell of an idea putting this out here that we can get back to this interaction like uh, like this and this is what this is what I grew up doing this is what we did when we came into this sport all you guys and it's neat to have them you know back doing it again well I appreciate you guys Clint Dale coming out um, you gave us some extra time with the delay of the start uh, of, of the show and we really appreciate you guys coming out um, I think there's a few people out here pulling for you guys to win tomorrow right all right well. Maybe. What do you think the percentage is, guys? I think about 88% Dale. Let's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for Clint. Let's hear it for Clint and Dale. All right, guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Clint Boyer, Dale Earnhardt Jr.
I hope that Blaney and Dylan are going to stick around with us for a little minute. Are y'all having fun out there here on NASCAR Trackside Live? We'll stick around. We'll be back in just a minute. Let's take a little look at some of the first-time winners we've had here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Nice turnout here today in New Hampshire in the Granite State. Looking forward to uh, 301 laps of excitement. Robbie Gordon, who's going to score the victory. Fifth first-time winner in Winston Cup competition this year. Ryan Newman comes off of turn four to the checkered flag under the caution in the rain to pick up his first NASCAR Winston Cup Series win. In just his 35th start, Ryan Newman goes to victory lane. Ryan Newman has joined the very elite roster of race winners in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. number one in the chase and Cliff Boyer becomes the fourth first time winner. I knew we could do it. Get down, boys. Proud of you. Congratulations to Joey Logano. He gets his first career win and he gets it here at his home track. And welcome back to NASCAR Trackside Live Primetime. You guys having a good time out there? Thanks for right. sticking around. We've got two very awesome and very handsome gentlemen that stuck around to join us on the I couch know, over really. here. I'm so I heard a yeah, yeah baby over here. Yeah. You look good too, Jose. Yeah, yeah, okay. your fans Thank you. Going. I appreciate it. That's all right. I know. All I'm the good. junior fans left and you're stuck with us. Come back. That's right. They did it. All of them left. Lots of fun left here I, at Trackside. We appreciate the good ones are still here. Staying. I see a three hat, a 21 cup. These there are the go. true fans right there you here. Go. There you go. There's some good Wood Brothers gear out there. I see it. I see it. All right. Y'all had any fun yet? All right. Fantastic. So what band do you have playing after this? What band we have playing? Yeah. Uh, you too, man. They're coming out. Bono's here. Yeah, Bono's no here. I'm a big U2 fan. I don't know. <laughs> uh, who we got? Amy, is that you guys I, you, know? You know what? I feel really bad. It's but okay. We're going to back find there, out. and they're ready to go as we're soon gonna as we're to done. Out. They're yes. going to be fun. I Thank know. They're going to put on a good show. Way to put them on the Thank spot you. there, dude. <laughs> Sorry. What's 12 Thanks, times four? <laughs> Me and Blaney are going to turn around and Goodness. figure it out. Now the real show starts. Or maybe now's the time I open a beer. It's like the after show. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, you crack open a little beer, have some fun. So we're – oh. Here, um, it's coming to me who's playing after us. It's Bobby McClendon. Bobby McClendon. Bobby coming McClendon. Up after our, our part, Bobby McClendon's going to come out and play a good show for you guys. So And they're back there, so make too. some noise for them. They're yeah. right behind yeah, the stage. Make some noise for Bobby. Yeah. All right. So, um, Amy, tell us what you've been doing today. Uh, we, we're talking about racing and hunting. We want to hear from, from your point of view. What's going on today? What are we doing? So, guys, this is actually my very first time to New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and it's awesome. All right. I love it. I've been running around, checking out some of the different haulers. I saw some of you out there today said hello. The rain did not scare you away, and I'm very proud of that. So thanks for sticking around, everyone. <laughs> right. I also noticed there is an insane trophy given away at this race. Oh, my yes. goodness. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. That thing is awesome. It may or may not have crept its the way stuff. into my dreams. Oh, it made it in your dreams. Yes, because the, I was the doing lobster. a little bit of homework, and the lobster was there, and it tasted delicious, by the way. <laughs> Just she the ate the trophy lobster in her dream. I did. That's, That's pretty true. crazy. Yeah. That's an intense well, dream. That's the tradition, right, is after the winner holds it up, then they cook it and ship it back to the race team that wins, right? Uh yeah, you can go with that. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've never won here, so. Uh, yes. But, yeah, I know Logano has his mounted on his wall. It's yep. like a like a deer. He mounts it on his wall. Yeah. And, it looks uh, good. It's a trophy. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's a impressive. sweet mount. If it you really see it, we actually have one at the office, and it's a sweet-looking deal. Yeah, that's you my don't lobster see it. on the wall there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see the lobster all, every day on Do the wall. Do they stuff lobster? Mounted up there next lobster, to your deer. Yeah. That's my 10-point buck, and that's lobster. I won his <laughs> New Hampshire. <laughs> that's I, I did know. Pretty cool deal. Jose actually told me whenever you hold him up, though, his little legs will try to grab onto your arms. Do you oh, know, yeah. he's actually coming to the stage tomorrow. Uh, here yeah, we go. We, go. Got a, we got a oh, shot right here yeah, of them holding thing. it up here oh, in Victory Lane. Oh, there, there you go. There's Joey holding it up. 
See him trying to hold on there? Wow. Look at and see the little arms grab you on the arm when you hold it up. <laughs> He's His trying to kill him. Like, I mean, he wants to he wants to take down Logano before Logano <laughs> takes him down, I'm pretty sure. I would like to see him cut the rubber bands off and see how good you can yeah, do it. Yeah, then let's see him make yeah. it a fair yeah, fight. Exactly. Fair fight. Yeah. yeah, that would be that would be in the pool. BA right there. That'd be awesome. In the pool. In the pool? In the oh, he'd wow, probably have an terrible. advantage. If it was on a basketball court, he'd have an advantage against Brad. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. So, Austin, speaking of basketball, I hear you're playing some basketball, right? Yeah, we Tell play a lot a of bit. basketball. So um, you, you like basketball. You've got uh, – Denny's got a basketball court at his house, and, and you've got a big three-on-three -three basketball tournament coming up. Yeah, so uh, Ryan and I both play in uh, what they call hoop group. Um, okay. It's our basketball group of guys that uh, Denny kind of put together, lets us come crash at his house on Mondays. He's got a – full court gym at his house it's pretty awesome and uh, it's really competitive we've got refs um, like paid refs yes oh yeah i mean it's serious i mean there's i got a technical foul last week shoot i about did too i, yeah. I was almost with you yeah it was uh we don't mess around at hoop group man wow there's that's gambling pretty cool. that goes on in these games i mean it's serious that's awesome man yeah. so both of you guys are pretty good i'd say we're we're, we're uh, top tier players in the in the hoop group in our own minds yeah we're top tier is there a place Players, for somebody uh, who's not very good? It, I is mean, there is, a place is for there, someone? <laughs> like, well, let's say, a couple, you know, spot. there's always that fifth round. If you just need a body. Pick. You just need a body. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, Phil, Phil Parsons, he's a solid fifth rounder, but, I mean, he, he does his work. <laughs> Nice. Waltrip, Waltrip actually does a really good job. Okay. Yeah. People wouldn't think Waltrip would be well, he's a, got the height. an athletic. He's just tall. Yes. Yeah, he's huge. He looks like a sweater. Is he a sweater? She, it's Don't touch him. It's <laughs> it's, yeah. it's I've disgusting. seen pictures of him post-basketball, and I'm like, oh, I my don't know. Gosh. It's disgusting. It oh. is disgusting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's on my nice. team, actually. Oh, he's on your team, yeah. <laughs> Do you nice. play uh, shirts versus skins? No, is we have jerseys. You know he's a sweater? There are rules against that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah, jerseys. That sounds like fun, though. Actually, the, the jerseys are all custom made. And, uh, Denny take, takes really good care of us. Uh, sweet jerseys and everything's done right. Cool. Well, tell us about your three-on-three -three, uh, charity tournament you have coming up. The charity tournament coming up is um, for uh, Children's Institute of Pediatric Trauma. And um, we raise a lot of money and uh, pull different celebrities from different walks of life together and pair sponsors with them. And people get to play basketball with not so good basketball players, but um, it's fun. And we play three on three. And uh, it's like a, you know, I've been to some charity golf tournaments before. And this one's a little different because you can bow, buy points for your team and buy fouls. You only get two fouls, you can foul out. <laughs> so uh, I might it's be fun. able to play in this game. Yeah. I mean, Austin asked Wrestling me to play background. in his, uh, it is, it is basketball tournament earlier this week, and I said, dude, I'm not very good. I was a wrestler. Wrestlers wrestle because you can't play. I'm from North Carolina. When you're from North Carolina, you want to play basketball, but if you can't, you wrestle. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's where I fell. So, um, man, if, uh, if, yeah, if there's a place for people who aren't very good, uh, then that would be for me. We'll, we'll, we'll have a, a position for you. Sweet. All right, I'm in, and I'll it's, buy it's, some points. It's entertaining. Uh, Tyler Farr got dunked on last year. That was that was funny. Wow. He didn't like it. He he was like, "Hey, uh, I got I got dunked on." You know, that's my best Tyler Farr. Sounds you know, <laughs> very impressive. You need to yeah. you need to smoke a couple packs before you yeah, do this. Yeah, a couple voice. packs. Uh, uh, Ryan, I had just you, I had some breaking news in my ear. Actually, the and this I kid you not that we're ha breaking news right here. Kyle Bush was just on. They interviewed him on SiriusXM, and he said that I will quit the Xfinity series when I reach my 100th re win. And he, this was his 89th win. Okay. So they just said it. What do you guys think? That's, That's his 89th? Yes. Yeah. Only 11 more to go, guys. Yeah. <laughs> today today <laughs> counts as five. Only 11 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> I love can we, can we so get double points? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> double credit somewhere? I don't know. That, that could be good. Why don't we tell him a race is like, Next weekend, we're an extra race here at New Hampshire for like nine, <laughs> nine straight Mondays in a row. Yes. Like races. Kyle show up and give him an Xfinity trophy. We'll have, we'll have 10, 10 lap races. How about exactly. that? And go. we need more lobsters. Go. We need yes. lots more lobsters, yes. right? Uh, there you go. So, I mean, I Ryan. Mean, you got you to give it to the guy. He's, he's good. I mean, yeah. he's, he's won them races. People give him a hard time, but he's, he's earned them races. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool, actually, you say you quit after 100. It gives a lot of younger guys a chance to race, and that's, yeah. what, it's, that's what it's for. Yeah. But uh, you got to give him props. He's, he's uh, a Absolutely. great race car driver, and he's earned that for sure. 
Absolutely. Um, you know, back in the day, Mark Martin used to clean up at the the nation the Bush series at that time. And um, yeah, I mean, when he was in the car, you knew Mark Martin was going to win. It was the Maxwell House car, right? I think that was pretty much the one he always yes. won in. And um, Win Dixie, yeah. Win Dixie car. Yeah, what? <laughs> Win, Win Dixie. Dixie. Thank Win you. Dixie Win Dixie car. Are Win Dixies around anymore? Yeah, there's some Win Dixie around really? still. Yeah. Do they have Win Dixies up north here or is no? No. no. <laughs> well, they said no. that really sadly. Like, oh. yeah. Do we have anybody from the south here? You guys knew Win Dixie. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go Grits. <laughs> grits. I, I, I love having uh, people in from like the west coast into, into the south and they're like, I got a taste of grit. Where, what are these grit things? I need to see one. I need yeah. one need grit. One. Give me a grit. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. I was like, I'm going to show you barbecue, sweet tea, grits, grits yeah. and real fried chicken at Bojangles. What, what is like the, the northern equivalent of like, it would Ooh, be like pork roll? Good pork roll. You guys pork roll? eat pork roll? That's a, lobster, that's a right? Pork roll? Lobster. It's be a lobster yeah. roll. Yeah. yeah. Chowder. Chowder's big up here. Chowder's big. Chowder. We had a chowder. I also heard there's no R in any of these. Yeah. Chowder. No, it's an lobster. H. That's right. Yeah. Is that right? Well, they have their own set of foods up here. Like, we asked some questions. We went out in the campground, and we were, what are the things that you call that you sprinkle on top of ice cream? What are those called? Jimmy's. Jimmy's. Sprinkles. There yeah. you go. Jimmy's. I call them sprinkles. Sprinkles where I come from. <laughs> yeah. Why Ain't putting no Jimmy's on my ice cream. I had yes. people saying Jimmy's in my ear, so I just said Jimmy's. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there weird. you go. So, um, Ryan, how serious do you take the basketball thing? Are you out there to win? Obviously, everybody is, right? I mean, I honestly, I get a little bit more upset than I should. Uh, I so think you're, you're taking does. it seriously. Yeah, everybody Ryan does. Ryan talks to himself on the basketball court. <laughs> it's pretty entertaining. You watch him. Pep talk. Something doesn't go right. He'll turn around and he'll start talking to himself. I'm like, hey, he's not happy. <laughs> yeah, that's just because I don't have a radio button. Yeah, let me ask <laughs> you that. <laughs> basketball court. If I had a radio button, I'd be, I'd be on it and talking. Do you practice? I, yeah. Do you practice? Yeah, I, I would. But uh, I, I take it serious. I'm competitive and everything. Every yeah? okay. athlete or any person is competitive and whatever. And yeah, uh, it gets it gets serious for sure. Should we put a hoop up in the driver owner lot for you guys to yeah, work on your, uh, your shots? Yeah. I think We'd we should. That, yeah. Okay. okay. You are the right places. person to make that happen too. By the way, I'm just asking. <laughs> I wouldn't even talk to you about that. We, we have some food trucks that there. have them, and it's it's good times. Oh yeah. Oh okay, yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, that's fun. We got food trucks in the uh, in the infield this weekend, and it's um, man, some really good stuff. So, uh, this new thing that I haven't heard of before. You guys, it's it's Canadian. It's called. Uh, Poutine, yeah. Poutine. Oh, it's so what? good. Hold on, I'm be careful why you dude. say that. It's called what? Poutine. I don't, what? Poutine. Poutine. I don't know what it is. Poutine. I this is a Have you guys ever tried it? <laughs> I, I don't know. Man. Marcus Smith said. <laughs> I, that's definitely what Austin said. <laughs> it's, but it's when I saw curds. it, I kind of thought, what is that? And uh, type of fish. It's fish. No, it's not fish. It's no, cheese it's curds no, on top of French fries with gravy. <laughs> and it's fantastic, right? <laughs> poutine is amazing. It's really good. I heard good. it's really good. I haven't had it. I don't think I'd like poutine about lap 100 tomorrow, so I'm going to stay away from poutine. <laughs> so. We're going we're gonna to make you believers. Yeah. I'll, oh, I'll my get you gosh. Some. What about, yes. um, do, any, do any fans have any questions you want to shout out to us? Yeah, yeah. There what you go. You, yeah, what do you got? Hang on. I'll come down with the mic. Good idea. Good down. idea, Ryan. Yeah. There it is. See, uh, see Rutledge on the screen, y'all. He is there poutine. with the poutine. Okay, I get it now. Who had the question right here? Right here. All right, <laughs> we got a at, question Jose? right here. What's your name? Jackson. Jackson. Where are you from? Newport, Rhode Island. Newport, Rhode Island. All right. What's, All right. Who's your question Welcome. for? What's your question? My question's for Ryan. All right. What is it? How many friends? Like, do you like? Who's your best friend besides Bubba Wallace in the NASCAR garage? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, that's a good question, man. Yeah. Nice question, um, well, besides Daryl, I grew up racing with Daryl, uh, so uh, he's one of my one of my good friends. And uh, you know, I grew up racing with Chase, so I knew him for a long time. And uh, it's yeah. And I'm a big Bill fan, so it's been nice to get to know Bill throughout the throughout the years. But not a lot of people know this. Myself, Austin, and Ty used to travel around uh, the country racing Bandolero Legend cars. I remember some road Sweet. trips we used to take, and uh, it was actually pretty fun. That was a long time ago, but. Um, no, there's there's people you grow racing up racing at Marcus's with. tracks. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, racing Bandos all Marcus's and legends. Tracks. So there's a lot of people you grow up with that uh, it's pretty cool that you're racing with them now on Sundays. That uh, that's pretty neat and special. You know, I, I love about football 
on we went to Kentucky. We we'd road trip with my mom to Kentucky. We I don't know if we had like the morning or something. We would play like backyard football behind the Belterra. Ryan scored a touchdown one time, did a backflip. I was like, whoa, you Sweet. do a backflip? Can yeah. you still do a backflip? He took gymnastics, no. I think, yes, for like can. a minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dude. No. Uh, that's, no. That, that's a broken neck right there. That's what that is. So talking about the bandoleros <laughs> and legends for a second, I, I want to share with, with everybody, those, we make those in Harrisburg, North Carolina, right about two miles from Charlotte Motor Speedway, and, uh, and it's so cool to see guys like, like Ryan and Austin and Bubba go from racing the Bandolero and the Legends car and now in the highest level of racing in NASCAR Cup racing. It's, uh, it's really cool. Um, and there, there are lots of kids racing around the country right now in Bandos and Legends. Yeah. Uh, they're just a few years away. Yeah, they're, it's a great series, great cars. If you're ever interested in getting your kit started, it's, uh, it's a good place to get started at. Are they done with their summer shootout yet? Still got a couple more weeks left. Yeah, they do a great, great yeah. deal called the Summer Shootout at Charlotte. They do in the summer months where kids are out of school, where they do that on Tuesday nights, and uh, that's what we got started in pretty yeah. much. I remember doing that a lot of times. So, who worked on y'all's cars? Uh, Gray and Mitchell Coble at a Mount Airy, North Carolina. Okay, did they cheat real good? I got kicked. <laughs> I got kicked out. You and, did. Uh, that's when I quit Legend Cars. <laughs> really? I got kicked. They said, "Don't come back for a year," and we said, "We won't come back." A year. Ever. And I went late Dang. model racing. So yeah. Man, I got to talk to somebody about that. You're not that. doing it right unless you're cheating. Just ask Larson. So. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> 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 Ooh, you're not trying. You're not trying. Right. right? There you go. Hey, we've got one more. I uh, I raced a Legends car in college in the summertime. My uh, my sponsor was Burger King, and I was like the most popular guy because the local. Burger King restaurant, wherever we were, would bring out a bunch of, uh, you know, Burger King sandwiches and fries and everything and milkshakes around my, my car, and everybody loved that. They would come over and hang out till all the food was gone, and they go over to somebody else's pit. But uh, it was it was fun. I the only way I could pass is if I bump somebody out of the way. That was uh, probably not the best thing to to make friends. They have though. bumpers on those cars for a reason, you know. That is true. That, that is, is a very true. good point. Hey, we got yeah. one more, we got yeah, one more yeah. fan question over here. We got one more fan question. This one's for you, Austin. What's your name and what's your question? My name is Nancy. Austin, when you got into the number three car, what was your first feeling driving it? My first feeling? Yeah. Don't screw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the first time was at Daytona, and there was like four million cameras on us that week, and uh, I just didn't want to miss a shift getting on pit road or, or like anything. Um, but we uh, luckily we did sit on the pole for that first race, so we had a really fast car and um, made it through the first lap. And I actually breathed because I, I remember the first time I, I had it in the NASCAR Truck Series, I didn't even make a full lap at Daytona and wrecked on the back stretch, like going into three. And I was like, man, my career's over right here. And I remember oh, Carl man. Edwards actually coming up to me and saying, hey man, it's okay, you know, it's it's part of things, blah blah. blah. And we actually went on to win two races that year, but. It was just nerve-wracking the first time because there was a lot of cameras and a lot of stuff going on around it and uh, just gotten more comfortable as time's gone on and the fans have really been supportive and getting that first win this year was really special in it. So uh, couldn't have asked for anything else to do it in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's awesome. That's awesome. Coke 600, that's pretty cool. So, um, so one of the things about winning the Coke 600, um, Austin now gets – uh, access to what we call the the champions lot at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's only for 600 winners uh, to park his motorhome, and um, so we're making some space for you now to be over there, man. That's Where pretty cool. Awesome. It's uh, as soon as you come at? through that tunnel in turn four. You know the turn turn four tunnel. It's like right to your right. It's like it's all black, sweet. blacked out uh, huh, well, kind of scrim over must there. Must be nice. I mean, <laughs> it is. It is nice. <laughs> Changing no. lots. We, I, and I'll probably have a spot for the Roval, right? Because the Roval's kind of that's oh, where yeah, all man. the driver lot yeah, was. Yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So uh, yeah, does we it have a, a doesn't have a basketball goal though. Uh, we'll that's going into in, this week when they make the stairs. <laughs> there you go. We have to make a little uh, renovation over there, but uh, should be good. We went up to Wall Street. We were there with uh, Coca-Cola, rang the bell at New York Stock Exchange. That was really cool. That was cool. Got to take my grandfather to do something that uh, it's really hard to take him and do something he's never done before, and that was pretty cool, him signing the book on the New York Stock Exchange and ringing the bell, and that was cool. That was cool. So you guys both, Ryan Austin, you guys are winners in the NASCAR Cup Series. That's awesome, right? I mean, these guys now – 
But I bet sometime between racing the Bandolero in a Legends car and racing your way up and you get in a cup car, there's some struggles along the way, right? When did you feel like, I think I got this? Um, there's definitely a lot of struggles. You know, it's, it's, you kind of go through every struggle, whether it's in the trucks or Xfinity, and then when you get to cup, it's a huge leap. Uh, on the competition side of how many or how much little details matter on the cup side and how much work goes into trying to win cup races and even run up front or even in the top 10. And uh, that was, I think, the biggest challenge is, is just trying to find speed, you know, whether it's a hundredth of a second. That matters in the, in the cup side. A lot more, I feel like, than, than, you know, the other two series for sure, just because there's more cars that can go win, more competitive drivers. And, um, no, I don't feel like you ever... You know, even though we won races, maybe I'm alone, but uh, I don't really feel like you're ever certified to do this forever. You have to keep improving sure. and keep showing that you can do it. Uh, you know, we could not have a ride next year. So it's just you always have to keep proving that you're capable of trying to win races and run up front. But uh, I don't think I definitely haven't gotten to that point where I think I've solidified a career. So it's, it's um, you know, always on the horizon of you might not be able to do it anymore. That's kind of motivates me harder, I think. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the best out there right now is Jimmy Johnson. I still think that he wakes up and thinks he hasn't made it, you know. I mean, it's it's crazy to watch what he's been able to accomplish and still have his drive to win more. And so, uh, like Ryan said, it, you, you never really think you've made it. It does definitely feel good to get that knife away from your throat to get that first cup win. But um, I feel like... Uh, you know, the funny thing is, like, you, you, you have certain times when you're coming up through there running bandoleros. I, I ran a lot of dirt and um, where you're like, man, I don't know if I can do this. Like, uh, I remember dirt racing one night at a local track back home called 311 Speedway in a super late model. And um, I, I, I started the race, like, sixth. And I didn't even make a start-finish line because I drove up. It, it was so dusty. Like, the first two rows just blew dirt everywhere. And I just stayed in the gas. And I drove up onto the wall and got the start finish line and, and like just rolled over oh my gosh and I, I remember like man I, I don't know I don't know if I'm cut for this stuff I mean maybe it maybe it's not meant to be and then like uh, two weeks later I turned around and won a race and that that's how our sport is there's so many ups and downs and you go through these these downs and ups and everybody kind of has these swings of momentum and it's how you ride them and, and the support group you have around me and and, and yourself, and if you have a good support group and guys that believe in you, you can just keep going and, and ride these waves because everybody's on top for a little while, and they're going to come off of it. And they'll, it's just time rolls on and how you, how you kind of ride that. I feel like one of the biggest things, too, is having to realize at a young age of it's unlike any other sport because you can be on the best team ever, name the best team ever in, in NASCAR, and you're going to lose a lot race, more races than you win. And yeah. Unlike any other sport, you can be on the best team in the NBA, NFL. You're going to win a lot of win a lot of games yeah there's 50 uh, 50 exactly yeah and uh you know you might at best win you know five to seven races a year and that's you're still losing 30 of them and, right uh, i think you kind of have to have that mindset of you're not going to win every single week and uh even though if you're the best team so that's just trying to you know always motivate to yeah to be better so yeah yeah when you're uh when you're racing short tracks you can go and win a lot of short track races it uh it's a little bit different but when you got one big race a weekend um you don't have quite as many chances, and, and there's a lot of really good teams and a lot of really good racers out there. So we, um, we're, we're having fun. So we got a two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. <laughs> All right. Two-minute warning. I know, and here's notes. the great thing is the drivers have been the one keeping us in line, like, yeah. hey, we need to throw to Amy. we got uh, two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting married soon, so I'm starting to get my own time clock, and, I, and she's sitting over there just, you know, she's ready to go to bed probably by now. All right. All right. So oh, hell, I'm ready to party. I don't yeah. know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually like I, I live my life like vicariously through Ryan now. Nice. So my fiance used to be a monster girl, and uh, now I'm trying to keep up with the Ryan Blaney drama through through every uh, single adventure. But nice. I'm trying to keep up with it. it. It's pretty fun. Yeah. There ain't no soap opera. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ryan, tell us about your Star Wars radio show, whatever that thing is, man. What, what are you guys doing? My podcast. Radio? Yeah, your podcast. Yeah, it my, looks hey. really cool, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Nice. That is awesome. So uh, uh, someone just gave me a shirt, actually, and um, that had my logo on it. But, yeah, the glass case of emotion, I named it after the anchorman. 
uh, film, so that was nice. But we talk about a lot of stuff. It's pretty neat. Uh, our logo is from A New Hope from the Star Wars movie. That's that's bassist. And, um, yeah, we got one of you. And uh, it's been pretty fun. You know, we have a lot of guests on. We've had Dale. Uh, the, actually, Jeff Gordon came on. That was really cool to have him on the show. And, and a lot of people, we got to get Austin on. He won't return Yeah, when's Austin going to come on the show there, huh? <laughs> no, I haven't got a phone his, call his yet. His people won't get back with my people you know. for it. But, uh, <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, he's a, he's a uh, Charlotte 600 lot winner now he can't he can't come on my show but um it's that is fun. quite a it's you know, quite we, a deal we wait till you win do you it have you'll, like a you'll call realize sign it. in the show you know how like some of those uh different shows like popular shows like you hear like this scream like i don't know like a like a call sign do you have a call sign for the show yet like you need something like uh, what's that one is like uh bada buoy or something they have like uh, some certain <laughs> oh, shows have yeah yeah bada <laughs> boo yeah yeah there you go. That's what it is. yeah see <laughs> We're not that, we're not that popular yet. Now, now you need a now you need a call sign. All right, I'll, I'm gonna work on that. Maybe we can we can come up with some. Hit him with yes. Yeah, I him like high. that. I know we're we're slacking. We're just getting started. We're new, but we talk about a lot of stuff from. Not did a you lot say of, anything when you won P- Pocono? No one can hear it. Like, did you scream something in the car? I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> that's all like a blur. You know when you win, it's yeah, all a blur. Yeah. Until don't you, say unbelievable. <laughs> change it up. You know. No, I don't I, say I, unbelievable. Like I, holy. Th- sh- yeah. <laughs> That'd be okay. That works. That'd be all that right. That also works. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. you go. I don't know if I said that, but I probably said something worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, cool. The, the, the podcast is fun. It's a lot of cool. We need you to call in, by the way. Hey, that'd call be awesome. me, man. We had yeah. Chip Wild call in, president of Daytona, and uh, we need you to call you in. You had Chip on before me? Yeah. Well, he asked. Oh, he did? Yeah. He did, okay. And it was before right. the July race, so the, he asked <laughs> to be on, and um, he actually... He's in, the, nice. he's in the logo, I think. What? Chip? Is no, that's he, not Chip. Okay, no, who, who Chip. is Chuck? Uh, <laughs> his name is Chuck. He's uh, the third guy that you hear on our podcast. That's uh, he's Darth Vader. Darth he's the bearded he's the one. Beard. Nice. But, uh, we need to get you on. I'll That'd be, be on there. That'd be great. In, or you could chop her in. Hey, look, there's some promotion yeah, yeah. for you go, right, right there. now. Hey, look I like that. that's hey, our logo. That. We, we have yeah. technology here at NASCAR Trackside. Yeah. We can make things happen. Who's the girl there? That's Kim Coon. Kim Coon. Okay, Kim She works for MRN. She's a so it's myself, Kim, and Chuck Bush. Where's her hand going? Do you need? <laughs> I'm, that's right. a microphone. Uh, is that like inner thigh? That's a microphone. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty I sure. I don't, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, they, they beef me up from what I usually am. So that's, you look that's good, good, man. Maybe forearms taller. Are beast. Good. Looking good. Good forearms. Good forearms. Are beast. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's well, our logo. We've got Bristol Motor Speedway coming up next for NASCAR yeah. Trackside Live. And we've Bristol been Night so Race. thankful to have you guys here. This has been an amazing thing. Yeah. Will you guys help us do the sign off? Appreciate so it. All right. Thank you let's guys. stand up have here. Fun tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for being here. Have a great night. Awesome. Ladies and Thank gentlemen, one more time, this. please give it up. Mr. Marcus Smith. Thank you, Jose. Austin Dillon. Thank you, Amy. Ryan, Ryan Blaney. Thank you guys so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't wait to see you in Bristol Motor Speedway, we'll be right? Here tomorrow also That's at 11:30. Right. You guys coming back, right? Tomorrow 11:30. Awesome. Send in your questions hashtag NASCAR Trackside. Thanks to everybody Thanks watching everyone. on NASCAR.com. Have a awesome. great night. That's right. And here we go. Let's see some of our favorite moments from today's show. Y'all stay spicy out there. Thank you New Hampshire.